In this video I'm going to take a look at what the employer's obligation is to provide reasonable accommodation for an employee with a disability in the workplace. So we'll take a look at that now and we'll take a look at a recent case involving the Court of Appeal in uh, involving a special needs assistant down in Cork in a school and there is a Supreme Court decision arising from the same case due shortly. They reserved judgment last week or thereabouts in this particular case which was in the High Court then went to the Court of Appeal and has now been in the Supreme Court. But it looks at the question of what is reasonable accommodation? How far does the employer have to go? What is the extent of the obligation? So we'll take a look at that now. Okay, the starting point for the employer's obligations is the Employment Equality Act of 1998. Section 16, which we can find here, nature and extent of employer's obligations in certain cases, sets out the obligation on the employer. employer. And the employer really has to make, uh, take appropriate measures and make reasonable accommodation. Now, this act has been revised, so you need to look at the revised act act and if you go down scroll down the page here you'll see that for the purposes of this act a person who has a disability is fully competent to undertake and fully capable of undertaking any duties etc etc if appropriate measures were taken by the employer and the employer then has a duty to enable access to employment participate or advance in employment or to undergo training and so on. So this section 16 of the Employment Equality Act 1998 sets out the legal obligation on the employer. The question though of what is reasonable accommodation and what are appropriate measures is the question. Now you'll see down here it says appropriate measures in relation to a person with a disability. There's three things. It means effective and practical measures where needed in a particular case to adapt the employer's place of business to the disability concerned. With, without prejudice, blah, 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 it includes the adaptation of premises and equipment, patterns of working time, distribution of tasks, or the provision of training or integration for integration purposes, or, or integration resources rather. And it does not include any treatment facility or thing that the person might ordinarily or reasonably provide for himself or herself. So as you can see there, appropriate measures from the employer's perspective means effective and practical measures, and it means the adaptation of premises and equipment, patterns of working time, distribution of tasks and so forth. That's quite a wide obligation on the employer. This was tested in the not too distant past by a lady in this particular case, which you can read about on my website, employmentrightsireland.com. Just to summarize it, it involved a lady who was a special needs assistant in a school. Her name, I think, was Mary Daly, and the school was a nanonagal school, I think, in Cork. She was a special needs assistant since 1998, but she was involved in a road traffic accident in 2010. She was anxious to return to the old role in the school in 2011. However, the employer was understandably concerned about her ability to discharge all of her duties. There was an occupational therapist report carried out and it was found that she was able to do nine out of 16 tasks. On this basis, the school wasn't prepared to let her back in her old role as an SNA. The equality, she brought a claim down to the Equality Tribunal on the basis that the school had failed to make reasonable accommodation and to take appropriate measures for her return to work. This is the reasonable accommodation and this is the appropriate measures which we've just had a look at there now, set out in section 16 of the Employment Equality Act 1998. So she brought her claim to the Equality Tribunal and she lost her case. She appealed to the Labour Court. The Labour Court found in her favour 
and it held that the employer had failed to make a reasonable accommodation for her return to work. The employer then appealed the decision to the High Court and the High Court also found in the favour of Miss Daly. However, it was then appealed to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal found that the Labour Court and High Court erred, uh, made a mistake in their decision and held in favour of the employer and basically said the point is a simple one. The statutory duty is objectively concerned with whether the employer complied with the obligation to make reasonable accommodation. And it goes on to explain the decision, but basically it stated that um, the fact that the employee wasn't able to do all of the tasks was significant enough and that ultimately it found in favour of the school. The takeaway for the employers then, I'm saying in my blog post, which as I say you can find on employmentrightsireland.com, is that the employer must act reasonably, must obtain professional reports, must take appropriate measures to accommodate the employee. Now the Court of Appeal found that obviously if you do that, but the employee is not capable of doing all of the jobs, all of the tasks involved in the role, then the employer is entitled to exclude the employee from the workplace. However, the case was again appealed to the Supreme Court. And at the time, at today's date and today's 24th of March, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment on this case. So a decision is awaited and it's awaited anxiously. But the bottom line is the employer does indeed have an obligation to make reasonable accommodation and take appropriate measures for a person with a disability to access the workplace. However, the extent of those reasonable measures, reasonable accommodation, appropriate measures has to be decided or clarified further by the Supreme Court. Hope you find this video useful. You can have a look at that blog post of mine on employmentrightsireland.com. Just have a look for, do a search for Nano Nagel. The name of the school in Cork, I think, is Nano Nagel. And down at the bottom of the blog post, you'll actually find the full decision or link rather to the full decision from the High Court or from the Court of Appeal rather. Here's the High Court decision. So 31st of January 2018. That's worth looking at because if you have an interest in this area, the court sets out the obligations and goes through the various pros and cons and the arguments for and against. So say I hope you find this video useful. If you do give it a thumbs up down below.